Now, moving forward, I'd like to introduce you to our panelists for this discussion. Let me welcome Mr. G. G. B. Shreethar, Regional Director, India, Middle East, and South Asia at Singapore Tourism Board. Also, welcome Sagar Push, CEO from Clan, Vivek Sharma, CMO at Pidilite, Lakshmi Bala Subramanian, co founder, Green Room, Bahar Dhawan Rohadgi, lawyer and artist, who will join us shortly. And to chair the session, I'd like to welcome Mr. Ajit Mehta, Senior Vice President for Content at Mindshare. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our stellar panelists. Very warm welcome to all of you. Hi, everyone. to you. Hi, thanks. Thanks, Khyati. Thanks for having us here. Thanks to e for m for inviting all of us and actually you know, putting this together. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Vivek, sir. Uh, Sheetar sir, uh, Sagar and Lakshmi. Uh, there are some known faces uh, who work with us quite regularly, but, uh, uh, and of course, Vivek sir, we know how, uh, you know, your past and how much of great work you've done in, in the industry. I'm just gonna directly jump into it and, and you know, uh, get into this uh, a topic of influencer marketing and what comes along with that. And it's been, you know, the last couple of years we've seen, uh, you know, this whole influencer breed growing uh, rapidly. Uh, you know, from a, from a marketing standpoint, I, I like to take up the first question with Vivek, uh, where, wherein I like to understand, you know, what's the role that you see of influencers in today's uh, times and where does it stack up from a marketing stroke media mix point of view? So good afternoon to everyone and uh, thank you, uh, Ajay, for having us here. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that please uh, call me Vivek and not Vivek, sir, because I'm only 50 plus and I still have some hair on my head. <laughs> so sure. having said that, uh, I think the role of influencer marketing today is really important. And that comes from the change in behavior of consumers as we see today. And let me elaborate a little bit. See, in this digital age, the for consumers, the main source of entertainment and news is social media. But yet, uh, ironically, consumers are trusting brands and companies less and less. They are trusting in uh, peer to peer, their friends and recommendations and reviews far more. The second thing which is happening is that consumers have are created, have created and are creating more and more what I call filter bubbles around them. Now, whether by pre-selection or by choice or by algorithms or by ad blockers, they choose what content and what they see, what they don't want to see. In fact, they don't appreciate push notifications. They don't appreciate push content. They don't want hard sell. So people decide what comes to them. Now, what is happening is it is very critical for brands and for, for anyone who wants to talk to these people to crack through these filter bubbles because the currency of influence in digital age is not reach and media spent that those days are gone. It is more about relevance and, and engagement. Now, influencers offer us a fantastic means of offering this engagement. And the second point to elaborate upon the first point is you can't reach consumers by pushing content to them nowadays. Those days are gone when we used to make ad and you know, forget even TV and digital debate that's gone. Even in digital, I can't create a content and push. They won't watch it if, unless they're interested. So we have to engage in conversations around with consumers around the topic they are interested in. And that once we get into that conversation and that is when brands can actually connect with consumers. And this is where influencers offer us a fantastic bridge between brands and those consumer conversations is how I would pay. I would say influencer marketing plays a deep role in actually connecting brand to consumers in this day and age. So, in fact, uh, no, it's absolutely right. I mean, whatever you said is is bang on. In fact, what even uh, Naval was mentioning in the last chat with Balki was that during COVID, we realized that the, the influencer actually became the creator, you know, in the last six to eight months, we realized that due to constraints of production and other issues that we faced, we realized that, uh, you know, these guys are actually not only about seeding content, but actually creating and seeding it for us, you know, so, so that part of the business is fairly, you know, it's grown a bit and, and the dependency on them has been fairly large in the last eight, eight to nine months. I'd like to also understand from you that uh, are there any challenges that you foresee, you know, working with these influencers because we're used to working with celebrities in a certain way. And this is absolutely a new breed, like we say, macro, micro, nano influencers. Are there any challenges from a brand or from a you know from a point from a marketing standpoint that you foresee 
in in working with them understanding their language their tonality yes and that's a huge topic uh, of course there are opportunities as well as there are challenges now i think marketers have to realize that they and we all of us are living in a different world and the marketing in this world is also very different so the challenge in influencer marketing first of all is to uh, is to is to select the right influencers you know uh, let me use a harsh word you know the days of lazy marketing of hiring a celebrity and then you know putting a message across as a continuum cut and cut and paste across different touch points are gone so you have to work hard in in actually communicating with this uh, what i call small small cohorts of people because people the segmentation is far more than we anticipate so first challenge is for you is to challenge uh, is to select the right influencers and this is not about selecting a celebrity saying this celebrity is suitable for me etc etc you have to choose on the basis of of two things because celebrities reach a select and a and a very focused target audience and they carry two things with them one is reach which is quantifiable other is trust and engagement which is which is qualitative in nature and then what is the audience they are reaching what is the kind of engagement they are having what is the tonality and personality which you rightly said is very very important that's the first challenge second challenge is when we deal with influencers we're dealing with human beings you know it's not about taking an ad and and, and uh, in a programmatic way put, putting it across various uh, time zones etc etc sometime influencers forget to put your post sometime they forget to tag so you have to deal with them on an ongoing basis it re- needs far more active hands on involvement from the marketing team of a brand it is not about you know push a button leave it to the agency and do it so it needs quite a continuous approach and last but not the least i would say uh, the challenge is marketers have to lead leave outside the door their temptation to do hard sell through influencer marketing because that backfires no no absolutely i think i think the, the key is to actually let them create content that they normally do the way they create their content in their tonality versus like you said giving them a typical 30 second or a 20 second and shoving it down mm-hmm. and saying that throw it out there and and let 20 of them do the same thing which is obviously going to backfire in some form or the other uh, my next question is to mr shridhar sir uh, you know in in this whole tourism industry and currently we know uh, you know the way uh, things are moving you know i'm actually sitting in goa right now i came here uh, to spend some time with family and uh, you know i've been monitoring in the last one month there's been a huge surge of influencer stroke celebrity activity on instagram and other platforms for hotels in maldives yeah so I, in fact i was supposed to go there and then i changed my mind and came to goa but you know the word of mouth and influence plays a large role in your industry so my question to you is that how do you gauge who's the right person and and, and what's the extent you will engage with them to actually speak about your brand so if you can just throw some light on that sure thanks yeah. thank you ajay and a very good afternoon to all of you in india i'm i'm uh, currently in singapore so it's a uh, evening oh. here um so good good afternoon and good evening to those who are tuning in um i think for singapore tourism it has always been very very much a, a case of building trust credibility and authentic communication of what singapore stands for and what kind of uh, value proposition singapore offers so you are right from a national tourism organization perspective uh, i think for us uh, as as mr vivek has uh, said and or, or as, as vivek said uh, Uh, not Mr. Vivek. Vivek said, mm-hmm. as Vivek said, um, it, it is no longer just a brand voice. I mean, uh, STB can come out and say Singapore stands for this. Singapore is is able to offer that kind of experiences. But at the end of the day, it is the word of mouth. It is people who have come here, enjoyed, and who can then communicate about it. And therefore, the role of influencers has become very, very important. And 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 just to sort of draw back, Singapore has been in uh, India for the last two and a half decades promoting Singapore. and through bollywood movies and through a lot of other initiatives singapore has got a brand affinity in the in in india so i think the next step for us is to try and make sure that we are able to pick the right voices to bring the message and especially so that we have now adopted a brand uh, identity which is passion made possible where we are actually communicating about singapore not through the buildings and infrastructure and the merlion and gardens by the bay it's not just that it is about the passions of the singaporean talents here and showcasing them and their voices so therefore on the other side when we are uh, communicating this 
with uh, Indian uh, consumers, it is important that we communicate in partnership with Indian influencers. So uh, it is very important that we pick the right influencers and, and answering your question, what, we, what do we look out for? I think the key fundamental is about authenticity. We need authentic voices, influencers who have either experienced Singapore or they have some affinity towards Singapore. So that authenticity is very important. Then you look at, of course, the influencer, right? Um, uh, what kind of uh, reach does he or she have? And again, in this uh, space, as you have rightly stated, there's macro influencers, there's micro, and then there's, there's nano. So we need to pick the right influencers for the right message we want to communicate. So uh, we need to figure out which are the influencers able to talk to the different passion tribes that we have. So we've got about six passion tribes, foodies, explorers, and so on. So for the right audiences, for the right regional languages, we need to pick the right audiences. So that's, that's the second most important thing. And finally, I think third is engagement. Um, Again, as as, Vijay, uh, as Vivek has said, uh, it is no longer uh, uh, enough for a celebrity voice to bring a big mass impact uh, statement about Singapore, but we do not know who is being reached. We need to make sure that the engagement uh, that, is, uh, uh, that is possible with the influencer is high, and therefore engagement for us is very important. The ROI is no longer the number of views, but yeah. it's also about the engagement that is important. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. No, thanks so much. In fact, bringing to uh, to the next point, I'd like to go to Lakshmi. Lakshmi, uh, Mr. Sridhar spoke about uh, engagement and you know the, the different kind of currencies we look at. You know, I I know two years back, uh, and you've been in the business for quite some time. Two years back, when we used to do uh, you know the regular campaigns with influencers, we used to depend on typical cost per post. So you pay X amount of money, and the influencer goes out there and posts whatever you you know you give out or whatever they create. But you know, if you see in the last one, one and a half year, a lot of the conversations are moving uh, from a so, sort of a, you know, cost per view, cost per impression to a cost per action sort of a domain. So my, my question is twofold. One is what kind of currencies and measurability uh, is something that you bring to the table as an agency? And do you see a trend of uh, this whole cost per post and currency moving from just plain uh, views and impressions into more actionable, uh, you know, space? In that sense. Hi, Ajay. Thank you. And a big hello to all of the other panelists and the audience who've tuned in. Uh, to kind of, yeah, you're right. So, right. Uh, so, when influencer marketing kind of started off, it was, like you said, more for reach and visibility and seeding. Uh, and a lot of amplification is what it was used for now. However, there is, there has been even, say, about the last year or so, a lot of conversation about conversions and sales. Or more than, you know, even verifying whether they can convert, it's more about tracking uh, whether influencer content is leading to conversion. So while there are, you know, in some cases, there are some uh, brands, you know, some of them that we even work with you on, are having a, uh, from a cost per post kind of a conversation, it's moving more in a cost per view kind of a conversation, cost per view and cost per impression. Uh, having said that, so influencers have a few roles, right? Like uh, Mr. Vivek said, some of them, there is reach that some of them do uh, are are you know can be extremely useful in creating brand awareness so there's reach there's engagement there's relevance and like you had also mentioned earlier in the conversation that a lot of them are content creators themselves so they all actually create mini ads instead of creating one large ad for a brand or for a campaign here we are creating 10 different ads which are you know very very specific to a region to a certain kind of an audience and a sec you know the, the people who are following that particular influencer so there's a role of content creation there's a role of um, you know reach and awareness that they also bring into the table so while some of it can still be about the conversion and the action which is still an important piece in the equation a whole lot of it is still going to continue to be in the brand saliency and the brand awareness bit because they do play a huge role in actually kind of influencing opinions about brands, about products, about educating, you know, how a product can be used or like even if you say a, a place, like you mentioned, uh, travel and tourism influencers are huge because all grades of influencers can create just simple vlogs about the place, about a resort. They give, you know, some amount of reviews and these are taken very, very seriously. So these are not always necessarily quantify quantifiable in terms of a direct conversion eventually they do lead to conversion. So having said that, I guess uh, soon everybody's working on tools and measures and 
uh, you know uh, kind of ways in which these can be quantified so i guess maybe in the it's a global kind of a conversation it's not just an india specific conversation so how to kind of quantify these and um, measure influencers and conversion eventually i think there'll be some kind of a solution for it vivek i'd like to come back to you on the, on this point that she mentioned you know there is a lot of chatter around unlike the celebrity that we use for a larger you know campaigns and you know the you know the brand ambassadors like we call them because you know the the terminology we use is influencers are almost like quasi brand ambassadors you know they are they are there for a short time and and that leads to this conversation around exclusivity so like we have a big brand ambassador locked in for a year maybe 3 years etc here it's only about a month maybe 2 weeks maybe even 2 months you know so when you look at these guys is there any scope or is there a time frame because we've had uh, you know uh, instances where you have a celebrity or an influencer talking about a particular brand in a particular month and the next month you see him talking about a similar category brand and that seems to be very you know in terms of it's obviously conflicting but uh, how do you see that uh, given the dynamics uh, on social and digital from using influencers for your brand today who can be using or promoting a brand next month which is your competition i think it's a sticky area ajay it's not very easy to solve for yeah uh, because uh, influencers have a deep following amongst their followers and followers believe them you know that is the fundamental premise of the relationship now if they see that influencer talking about one brand and next maybe after a gap of one month start espousing the cause of another brand it is conflicting in the minds of uh, minds of consumers so i think marketers would have to figure out some framework in which at least some kind of a cooling period or a gap is uh, needed between what we call category exclusivity that i think would be a very clean way of doing it uh, locking uh, what we call micro and middle influencers for long period is not possible because of the economics you know then right. you have to pay a high cost and they become as costly but i think we have to solve for this because uh, we don't want to create kind of conflict in the mind of consumers i would like to just add one thing to what lakshmi was and you were discussing about measurability and the roi i would like to bring in a perspective of b2b you know some you we also use influencers for b2b and influencer marketing is not only done through instagram and twitter it is also done through other mediums so for example for dr fixit when the lockdown started we we did a series of webinars about uh, need for waterproofing and how what relevance dr fixit plays in it with leading architects opinion makers and civil engineers and those events were recorded they were retweeted they were shared and now in that b2b cycle i do not see immediate conversion of my brand into any sale but they are building a reputation where my brand will be specified in projects as times go ahead so sometimes lead is lead time is high but i think uh, we have lost the art of actually building what i call i call qualitative equity of the brand which leads to specification or recommendation of the brand in the future and i believe influencers play far greater role in this than driving sales if i would drive sales i have performance marketing tools i have various other means to do it of course like any other digital medium uh, of course we can link influencer marketing campaigns if we have a link to ecom or so for example uh, after awareness and consideration we can measure preference through like share retweets etc uh but i think a right balance of what they bring on the table in terms of qualitative engagement and trust and quantitative reach and perhaps some sales would be a better approach than to go only after numbers uh you seem to have lost ajay yeah i think uh... yeah can you see me now sorry yeah, yes yeah. No, I audible yeah I am in, I'm in the hotel so I'm sorry I'm not at home I was just uh, talking about Vivek the the point you made about performance and you know uh, performance marketing angle and we keep discussing this at times that you know in typically in performance marketing we use a lot of brand creatives you know uh, brand posts or videos to push it through to the kind of audiences we want to target uh, there's a very sort of a, a point that what if we actually do the same performance marketing or push behind an influencer post you know because one is that this whole organic inorganic inorganic sort of reach that an influencer can get you because depending on his followers but uh, if you have to put x amount of money uh, media money or a boosting like they call it in that in in that domain 
behind influencer posts or or a plan behind influencer marketing uh, plans uh, do you really believe that it would work for a, for a, from a beyond awareness and even into conversion because for me when i look at a regular performance campaign and a separate campaign for uh, like a brand post versus an influencer post definitely the engagement is higher on the influencer post so do you believe that it will have the same impact when you put media monies behind and in so that's where the world is moving right if you if you really want to take, scale this up and take it into uh, multiple mediums reach the right audience and find higher engagement than just putting on a uh, brand post do you believe that an influencer post will work better than just a brand typical social post or a video yes there are couple of considerations here you are you are spot on actually and uh, there's no one single answer to this and let me elaborate see for example yes we should put some money behind to put if if uh, the influencer is able to reach a specific sharply defined target audience with high engagement of course it makes marketing sense for me to put monies behind right. but at the same time i am also paying money to the influencer to reach an already existed curated audience uh, cohort which the for for which the influencer is following right the second aspect is the content now if the the influencer is creating a content for me a video or a blog or something then uh, if the content is that depends on the content if the content is original then i would like to put money and say let it reach more people or if i may start with organic initially and as it i see they get gaining traction i put money behind that that's the approach all of us actually follow there are no set rules here Uh, or uh, i may give the celebrity my own content and say this is the content and he just uh, post it put it with your comments and likes etc etc so it all depends upon brand objectives and where we are but i think uh, we will move towards a place where judiciously judgment based we should put money behind the right content uh, and if the audience is difficult to reach i think we should do that that will increase our roi on our investments Sagar, I'm just going to come to you before that. Sheetal sir, what's your point of view on that in terms of because I know you know your industry does a lot of performance-led campaigns and targeted campaigns. Do you believe that pushing the right influence and like you know Vivek said, sir, uh, uh, Vivek said, and even I'm sure Lakshmi will agree that you know when we see the engagement, uh, you know, out of ten influencers, three or four of them actually derive for a brand. Isn't it uh, you know sensible enough to put media monies to re- reach a larger? set of audiences more targeted with their content created by them yep so i think i think i want to just offer a, a sort of a reimagining of how the influencer strategy is for singapore tourism board so i uh, agree with vivek that in many ways when we are directly engaging influencers and through them their their fans there's one approach but increasingly we have also realized working with another partner so whether it's zomato for a zomaland uh, event or this weekend in fact just on uh, this weekend we're going to launch uh, with book my show uh, a, a series of influencer led campaigns and we are putting partnership dollars so it is partnership dollars so a it is a content creation which is very important so we have very good authentic uh, realistic content by the influencers in their own voices but b the content distribution is increasingly very important for us as well so we pick the right platforms whether it's zomato and therefore they have got their own fan base right. and added to that uh, you know you got the influencers so Uh, we need to expand the space of how do we reach the influencers audiences but again a platform like a book my show or a, or a zomato uh, allows us or or a chipoto right allows us a, a reach which is far wider than just the influencer so in many ways uh, it is it is making sure that it is uh, expanded space that we are going into the influencers have got their own reach but we also need to then work with other partners and amplify uh, the reach so that's how we are now relooking at this and that is why now it is a very important strategy for us uh, to use to have the influencers but we add on a platform or a partner that brings us amplification thanks true sagar you know there are multi- i mean you're a, i think you're one month two month old in this business you've been from the digital side you've done a lot of performance marketing so i know your background and we worked together uh the question for you is that it's quite competitive right in the last two years we've seen a host of agencies and you know uh, influencer setups that have come uh, into the into the business each of them bringing their own platform tech you know right from uh, selection planning buying seeding pricing all built into the kind of tech that you guys are putting together so 
how does that make a difference for a, for a, for a brand or for a, from a marketer's point of view what's the kind of advantage you bring to the table because there are tons of them and today if you talk to the big platforms like youtube and instagram even they are talking about influencer marketing right so with you guys being there what's the expertise that you all bring to the table and how can a brand actually uh, benefit from what you have to offer here yeah <clears throat> so ajay uh, largely you're right there are a lot of players in the market today who are uh, maybe offering the same solution i would uh, not really comment on what they are offering uh, in uh, at the heart of what we have designed and what we have uh, built essentially is uh, the four five problems that when i used to work with you together i i could you know feel those uh, and, and and see that discovery is of an influencer is is a big problem how do you find the right influencer if you find one how do you reach out to those influencers uh, if you're able to reach out to them are you is there a you know tool that can actually give you the right metric about that influencer you know understanding how many followers are actually genuine how many are suspicious so on and so forth uh, and then the entire execution of the campaign and before that very importantly is the transaction very very transparent and uh, while you're right i've been in this industry for the last 2 3 months uh, since the time uh, i've taken over but uh, uh I, i do realize that uh, uh transparency also is a big problem here because uh, there are a lot of middlemen a lot of times you're not able to reach out to the influencer directly and uh, you know that's where uh, the whole problem is because i have spoken to multiple brands uh, ab- about this and they have said that uh, at times they have reached out to two different people for the same influencer and the cost that they get is is totally different why because the the guy who's basically enabling that is maybe marking up that fees uh as as one of the things you know that you you said i am from the paid marketing side i've done programmatic and performance marketing for the longest time and i felt that the entire uh, uh reason the biggest reason why it became very popular was because it could bring about a lot, lot of transparency in this entire transaction because digital 10 years back also had the same problem right uh, you never know a uh, new if you paying the right cpm uh, uh, to the publisher or not and that's what programmatic or perhaps facebook and youtube eventually uh, you know built in because they became self serve platforms so i think that's where uh, we are trying to bring about a differentiation we are we are ensuring that uh, uh, we are building ancillary tools around this entire ecosystem not just for the brand side or the demand side but also for the supply side essentially for uh, the micro influencers the smaller ones how do they can come on the platform how can they can you know maybe generate a, a, an invoice uh things to take care of because these are small influencers they don't have people to manage their uh, finances or you know make their life easier maybe if you could build in a a content management system a, a seeding system where they can actually uh, uh you know uh, take content live with a certain calendar so there are these things that we're working upon of course you have to find the niche in in the offering which is there and you have to you know bring about uh, your own uh, element in this entire offering so i think that's that's where we are trying to be different Lakshmi, on on the transparency bit and the pricing, I'm I'm, I'm Vivek is here and even Shrita is. I'm sure they they get a lot of uh, you know proposals and plans for their teams coming in from multiple sources. How do you actually determine? Because you know it's it's strange. Like I was talking to someone yesterday, three months back, their price to put out a post was a lakh of rupees, and and three months later they're saying they're three lakhs. So how do you determine what's the right price? Uh, Uh, how much should be paid what's the kind of delivery accountability reach uh, how do you calculate that and how do you propose that at times where uh, you know there's no science behind pricing in this sort of a domain yeah how do you manage that so um, it's i mean unfortunately it's still somewhat manual in that sense so we do have some kind of an understanding of having done this over the last many years right so we know a person is worth so much basically couple of factors one is their following so if their cost has increased over a few months it's mostly a merit of their following sometimes it's also a demand supply kind of a thing so a person is um, you know a trending because of how how much they've been in the news and so on or an actor cost could increase who's also an actor influencer whose cost is in, could increase because a movie is releasing so there is you know a lot of pr attached to uh, those kind of things that happen but largely Uh, i wouldn't call it a science but there is some amount of quantification you know people in uh, agencies like us do which is there is uh, there should be some amount of engagement there should be some amount of organic views 
there should uh, in terms of videos there should be some amount of uh, certain you know uh, following that each of them should have to charge a certain amount so somebody with a 10k following for example wants to charge 75000 or 1 lakh that is a very high amount so there are some benchmarks that we have formulated over the over the course of time where we know be on our own so sometimes you know if the brand comes to us and says they want x person but we believe that x person is charging an exorbitant amount we kind of go back and advise the brand to drop them because one their engagement could be low and they're not worth that kind of money to their following or the reach that they could kind of bring about uh, you know for that campaign uh, would not possibly be worth it so it's uh, it's some amount of qualitative plus quantitative kind of a check that you know as an agency we should kind of take the responsibility to do and which we do in almost all cases lakshmi you know vivek spoke about measurability you know i, I mean i just like yeah. to understand that when you work with brands and you know lot of marketing managers and brand managers what are the expectations i mean i understand that there are certain parameters we can check because we have access or you have access to a particular influencer you can look at the views and you know the basic yeah. uh, you know uh, the numbers that we that they see on their dashboard but beyond that what is the kind of stuff that they ask you is it about where is the impact on brand you know stuff like that and how do you address that because at time that control you guys don't have as an agency neither yeah. does the influencer for him it's very simple you're riding on my popularity my my following uh, i understand your brand i've got the tonality here goes the post you guys approve it and we move forward but in reality if i need to or if the brand needs to measure the impact you know on on brand then what is that what are the kind of stuff that they ask you what is how do you address that uh, from a from a you know marketing standpoint so the most common question that brands uh, end up asking us is and it's like i said it's a conversation that's been going on for a long time is beyond awareness and engagement and buzz you know that uh, influencers and content tend to create how much of it leads to conversion is a is a question a lot of uh, you know brand managers still end up asking because i believe that's an internal question that gets asked as well right so because most others are somewhat getting quantified whether it's google ads or at least in the digital economy most others are getting quantified in some fashion but a good amount of the questions we actually hear is in terms of how much conversion it does it actually uh, lead to which like i said is is a problem that is yet to be solved but like mr vivek said there are um, it's a there is it's best of times it's just the lead time that it it's a time gap that uh, it actually takes before it becomes a sale usually best of cases an influencer content that has worked well does end up in becoming a conversion or a sale of some sort it's just that it's not necessarily always immediate it's not always a swipe up link to an e-commerce website or so on it's a, it's a mix of you know um, awareness plus saliency plus education about how to use or what to use or when to use moving on to you know uh, uh, you know like uh, again like how mr vivek said about uh, uh, for the brand to build some kind of thought leadership in that category saying for x i am the right person kind of a thing and which eventually kind of converts to sale so in terms of measurability i mean we still in the uh, quanti- quantitative metrics which is your reach views engagement impressions it's in some cases clicks but again influencers as of now may not be the best uh, method to drive clicks at all you know we, it's it's best to go for a performance campaign in that case coming back to yeah, yeah. to uh, lakshmi one thing i would look definitely for is shareability of the content engagement because when the content is shared i am sure then i am confident that the my brand mention and the content is likely to reach more people and it will have some influ- influence on the preference for the brand yeah so that is one thing i would look at additional to what all lakshmi had said yeah there yeah. is one question in addition to what uh, lakshmi had mentioned that do you encourage at your end uh, you know where we do so many sort of studies brand lift studies etc do you ever think of uh, something like this should be put together by you know i mean we are talking to big platform like facebook insta the money is going there we are literally deploying a huge amount of some uh, you know to promote those platforms also in a way but uh, do you encourage that at your end in terms of having a basic brand lift study especially when there's a substantial amount of money is going behind the campaign and they're slightly more long drawn than just a 10 day or a two week period of course we do brand lift survey studies and you can do uh, your own studies uh, we've often done our own studies amongst the target audience through an uh, research agency 
Let me do a big campaign like we did for Fevicol 60 years last year. We did a, we did three point study and three points in time and measured the impact of all the digital spends on the brand. So yes, that is advisable. Uh, but it's good not to get lost in numbers. You know, uh, ironically, digital is measurable. So everyone want ten parameters to be measured. But tell we spend crores on television. All we measure is uh, reach frequency and VR. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, I think marketers have to. Be careful not to not to really lose the art of brand making uh, and brand building, and the art still lies in the softer aspects as well, and building preference and equity for the future. And that is where I think you know we should not look at digital marketing also as a special animal. They're actually fundamentals of marketing are the same. Right. It is just that it offers you more control and and opportunities and touch points. So yes. So we have Bahar who's joined us. Hi Bahar, uh, this is Ajay here. Hi, we have, how are you? Yeah, we have Sagar, Vivek, uh, Shreetal sir, and, uh, and Lakshmi who are there. I think you just joined us. I have a couple of questions. I was waiting for you to come in. Actually, you know, we've spoken a lot Sorry about. Sorry about uh, that. <laughs> that's fine. Sorry you know, we've spoken a lot delay, about. Uh... No, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, you know, we've been speaking a lot about how you know marketers and brands look at uh, influencer marketing and the role they play uh, in today's times. And and both Sagar and Lakshmi touched upon the fact that how do they go about. You know, engaging with influencers, selecting them, you know, and 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 providing those kind of plans that we would need for a particular brief or a brand. But I like to understand from you, you know, that this is one part where we don't get to hear directly because we deal a lot with, uh, you know, the influencer agencies. But when you are approached, uh, you know, by a particular brand or an agency, uh, what is there in your head in terms of what are the factors that determine uh, your choices that I would like to work with a particular brand or a particular type of a brief? How how do you go about deciding? I mean, I, like I understand a beauty blogger or a or a you know chef would like to talk about certain brands and food and etc. But is there a certain uh, is is it is some judgment or a gut that comes into play? And how do you go about that? Of course, you know. First of all, I would just want to make clear I have not just been a default influencer like what you call as of today. I've been a practicing lawyer. I was with Amarjan Mangadas for five years, and Facebook was one one of my clients. So. Before I gone, uh, came ahead in front of the screen creating content, I was busy drafting their policies and also uh, gauging all the engagements and adverts. So I do understand that while uh, a lot of brands go for the numbers, honestly, that's not the money. You have to understand the quality of the following that people command. It's all about the kind of, with, however small is the following significant, is it important to your brand? With this, if you don't have that approach, your no matter you, who you go for, you may go for an entertainer, who are also loosely termed as influencers today on say, yeah. Instagram. An entertainer f finally mentions a fruity brand or some some other brand that they're trying to promote or a skin brand, right after speaking for one minute and promoting themselves as you know, I don't think that really con connects with the audience or converts people. Or often just go and watch their profile because they look good in what they wear or they manage to entertain you. That necessarily does not translate into a conversion for you. Whereas you may be putting in the funds. So you have to also be a little altruistic and have a more, uh, I don't know, you can't have such a myopic approach of just having an objective standard of engagement. Yes, people are, are uh, commenting on it, but they are, are they really inquiring? Uh, how does that product taste? What about the calories? Have you seen, you know, like people don't end up researching that much. So it's not just about the numbers. And often, I mean, as a brand, I just straight away jump into this. I'm also aware, and so should you, even when you're doing an engagement analysis, it's not just a straight jacketed formula. There are agencies sitting and there are interns sitting who are creating this comments for the, if you see the quality of the engagement also out of the 200 comments that you see, how many are really relevant to your product? Probably 10, if at all, because they have literally 10 comments and the rest are just following like, oh, I admire you so much. You look so good. You are uh, you end up making us laugh so much. You make our day. Is that really relevant to your product? So as a brand, it's not just a sh short-circuited formula that, you know, somebody has a number of followers, X number of comments, and you go, this is the person you have to go for. No, the idea is always to identify someone Who's probably, I mean, I'm no disrespect to the bloggers per se, because I know that main source of income is 
the internet yeah, social media yeah. youtube instagram or any other profile you have to kind of understand if that is their only bread and butter they will promote anything that comes to them they unless they have a clause of exclusivity and uh, as a lawyer i do understand that unless mentioned they will promote everything that is in the same bracket now what as a brand would you want to get lost in a page which just looks like ad or would you want to resonate with somebody who has a personality of their own they have a path of their own a journey of their own they have managed with the passage of time to generate a certain amount of trust and respect amongst those number of followers which may not be very high but it is a significant following like for instance i know for a fact that i being in the position i am i would probably not uh, promote because not not because i'm against it but i may not promote a lingerie brand brand it may not go with my profiling it does not mean that i don't wear it okay or i'm not i i'm hesitant to speak about it but in my position i know i will not inspire any trust for people to actually follow me for a certain reason however for instance since i'm a new mother and my toddler is 5 weeks old and i do put up you know um, my trust with law and art and how i'm trying to raise funds through art you know and i enjoy my skin care i enjoy my fashion but i would only do it if i can, i enjoy it i will not do it for money because this is not my main profession this is not my only source right. of income so why would i do something which i can't even relate to because then instead of the respect that i may have be commanding to five people even they would start distrusting me so there is a but certain you, amount of you, trust sorry before you came in there was a question that i asked was and since you you've been on the other side you've seen all the documents like you said you've seen all the policies you know unlike the celebrity world where we have exclusivity yeah great yeah. right. so yeah so no, it depends unlike... you have to put it in a contract otherwise it all depends on the reading of the contract i personally because brands don't really come ahead with uh, agreements typically brand approach a pr agency pr agency tells them these are the five influencers in your bracket your bracket okay and none of the influencers per se are experts none of them are skin care experts they mostly bloggers or they enjoy a product or they enjoy a certain genre and they talk about it so it's very difficult to point out only a fashion influencer in fact that's the broadest category so having said that i think it's very important to understand your target audience your niche and then go for the person who does not does not promote everything and i mean brands are not always mindful of tweaking in the fact that there should be exclusivity i think it should be read into every document because a blogger ends up promoting five cell phone brands in two right. months how would you trust them they have made their money uh, how can you uh, apart from the clicks that you got because you asked for the engagement and you know the insights of a given post but do you really know if the sales happened you don't maybe then the model that we've seen that works is when you give those dis- discount coupons of 10% through a certain uh, uh, influencer that is something that actually we've seen you can gauge the conversions if at all because you would be surprised but even when brand is asking for insights everything gets photoshopped because we we part of a committee that is on the crackdown because nothing the algorithms and their insight numbers don't match these people are experts and it doesn't take rocket science to touch all these information so i think it is very very important to do a little homework at your end also it's not, not true, true. objective standard no coming and back to having... the, yeah coming back to the point you made and i'd like to go to vivek and shridhar sir and ask them that so you know the, in the recent time we are hearing a lot of the uh, you know this whole thing of shifting towards macro to micro and nano uh, apparently uh you know you know the the kind of reports we're seeing and you know whatever pilot tests we've done across the board we also tend to realize that the engagement to them is fairly high you know and and a lot of these new platforms especially ecom platforms are offering the affiliate marketing sort of you know the influencer sort of model to brands directly i just want to understand do you really believe that there is scope to actually go down the road and use micro influencers both from a brand safety standpoint and from a business standpoint to actually to to move from just plain uh, salient awareness to actually conversion here because that's where the world is moving and like i mentioned earlier as well for oh, cpv is moving to cpa you know a lot of the brands are asking that can you create long drawn annual sort of uh, you know deals or long term deals where we can use micro influencers to create or drive business for us so uh, vivek if you can just throw some light on that and then we can reach uh, and ask shita as well 
I think this time Sita should go first. I go yeah. first. Yeah. Go first? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I think I think uh, Ajay is an interesting question, right? Well, okay. A first of all, what is the definition of macro micro? It is typically the kind of fan reach the influencer has determines whether yeah. it's a macro micro nano. Uh, but I also have another layer of thinking, and, and this is something that we are trying to understand, right? Because the influencer also is what kind of uh, pro, uh, communications can we use that influencer for? The narrower it is, for me, he's a micro-influencer in also a certain way because there's a certain... So, for example, uh, uh, we have been working with a lot of influencers, and we pick... So, if it is a comedian who is a stand-up comedian, there's a certain reach he has. If it is a chef... There's a certain reach he has. So it is passion driven, right? So I think for us, it's increasingly very important that we look at those kind of uh, passion uh, passion bridge, right? Where it is in connect with what we want to look at. So, for example, in the book, my show uh, uh, launch that's coming up. So we've got a comedian, we've got a film director, we've got a chef, we've got a singer songwriter. So along that line. So I think that's one, that's one important area. The second is, uh, when it comes to micro and uh, nano influencers, it is also about what kind of regional language platforms that they may allow us to get into. Um, uh, okay, in, in no small way, in no small way, these are uh, micro or micro influencers. So when I'm, I'm just giving an example, it's a wrong example perhaps, but so when we wanted to get into uh, uh, co communicating to the South Indian audience, the Tamil Nadu audience, we, we leveraged on an opportunity. Maestro Ile Raja was in town in 2018. The late Dr. S.P. Balasubramania was in town last year together with Dr. K.J. Jesudas. But it was a Tamil language-oriented activation. And we were very clear. It is going to be only in that medium. It is going to be only to that audience. And we had that activity. So if I bring that down to a micro-influencer now who can allow us to talk to somebody in Malayalam in Kerala or somebody in Gujarati, in, you know, I, I will go for that. So I think it is important how do we pick and why do we pick them. Uh, and then, as, as uh, Bahir and, and Vivek all have talked about, and Lakshmi has talked about, it is the engagement, it is the authenticity of the voice, uh, and it's the kind of uh, uh, reach that they allow us. And then we go from there. And, and one final point, we are not in a zero-sum game. It is not a win-lose. or It is a win-win game. We are also very clear that when somebody associates with Singapore Tourism Board, they also get to benefit. When I associate with them, I benefit from them because of their reach. So uh, we want to mutually grow. We want to mutually benefit from this relationship. So, yeah, mutual benefit is very important. Over to Vivek. Yeah. See, <clears throat> I would stick my neck out and say I would not really go for quantities and large number of micro-influencers. And I'll give you my reason. Because influencer marketing is not about giving same or similar message to everyone and say propagate. Influencer marketing is the confluence of three things. What is the brand message? Okay. What do the audience want to listen? What do they want to have conversations around? And the unique personality and the perspective which the influencer carry. So you have to deeply work and join all three and then work with the influencer to say, how will you create the message for me? Okay. I can't control if I have so many large number of micro influencers. I will not take name of brands, but I've often seen on my feed. You know, 25, 30 influencers feed coming and they're all giving the same cut paste message. Now, that is uh, really poor influencer marketing. Yeah. So I think influencer marketing is hard work. Uh, you have to carefully craft a message because why should you give freedom to the accommodate the unique personality of the influencers? You also have to look about the brand message, the boundaries you don't want to cross. You know, there is a challenge over there. So I think because of this, I would go step by step, and at a time, I would deal with few, you know, a few influencers than large number of micro influencers because large number of micro influencers is similar to TV mass marketing, which is not yeah. what influencer marketing is all about. True. Yeah. Sorry, I'd questions. just like to add. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I think it all depends on what is your purpose. Is it a saturated phase? Then you know you have to have a mass appeal. But if you want to curate a space, you know, you want to create a niche, then you have to obviously go for someone who has a personality that will create a market for you. And in that case, it all depends on the, you know, next segment you're looking at. So, yes, in that case, you have to limit yourself to those three, four influential people who will reach out to, say, a bigger space because they're creating a message for you. If it's 
a saturated space, say a fashion brand, like you just try to sell a scarf, there are nine dozen people to do it. Then you may need a different kind of approach. And that's when you probably would take in the number so that they can just pervade the space and reach out more people because that's a direct conversion. But creating, an, like entering the market with a new product does mean that you have to be able to curate that product and also that has to be with a person who has the ability to create communities on their own. So yeah. I think the approach depends. And earlier, the distinction between micro and macro used to be depending on the platform that they operate on. Macro influencers used to be your typical celebrities for people. But with the OTT platform and social media, they're being with in immediate surge in their popularity and everyone being engaged and like on their phones. There has been a, a very, you know, like, I won't say gradual, a very, uh, like a tidal shift of, you know, people also, uh, the consumers sitting on your phones. So that's the reason why the micro influencers have seen a better performance in terms of conversion. So it all depends on what are you trying to sell and uh, give out in the market. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sagar, do you want to say something? Sagar? Yes. So uh, I would also tell one thing. We always tend to, uh, you know, uh, correlate uh, engagement with micro influencers. We feel we should also understand that when the numbers of followers are less, the engagement rate is always very high. It is it was yeah. it is inversely proportional to uh, to the fact that when your followers increase, your engagement would also come down. So it is not really a right comparison. It's uh, it's a simple uh, digital media metric. It always happens with with every kind of campaign. So that shouldn't really be the first parameter for anyone to basically just say that okay, this is what is working. I would agree to what what Vivek said and what Bar also said. It is more like horses for courses. You need to be very clear about what is the objective that you want to drive and uh, that is what should define the kind of influencer that you want to have for your campaign. That's that's it's very clear. So I just want to ask agree. I'm just giving you my personal experience. A lot of engagement uh, with my uh, Instagram happens on my DMs. A lot of it. People don't openly share about their experience with respect to transcending borders or you know like uh, my shift from law to art and creating a space for new artists and people to follow their passion and talking about whatever they enjoy not everyone does it openly publicly in the comment section so often i turn off my comments but then with the brands they know the number of sales that happen because the queries and the long passages that come to me yeah. not everyone comfortable with exposing unless they're just praising you you know or just saying great you look great or you know the shallow comments are on the comment section DMs have some serious engagement so i think there uh actually facebook is working on that so that instagram can also have a feature where dms do, uh, do not uh, with the keywords if that is relevant to the brand can all those insights can also be shared with that because okay. a lot of this just information one, is masked yeah just one last question because we have other audience questions that we need to take uh Sagar, obviously you've got into this business like you said recently you've been funded and you know you're almost a new player in in the market what's your sense from now to another couple of years, a two-year view of uh, where do you see in terms of marketing? Do you think the spends are going to go up? I mean, there are a lot of numbers floating around saying that it's a 400 crore, 700 crore, uh, you know, sort of a business. But do you see really brands and you know the top marketers sitting here on, on on the panel? Do you really see them actually, uh, you know, going 2x or 3x because the, the spends are not fairly? I mean, they're not very large compared to the the spends they do on digital. But do you see that as a as a as a as a huge growth sort of a thing in the next couple of years. What's your sense? Given that you've seen one and a half year, how we've been through it? Yes, so I would uh, not really put some astronomical number to 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 what the growth is going to be. Uh, but I definitely feel that it's going to grow much, much bigger than what it is uh, uh, right now. And I have a few uh, you know valid points that I've seen in my journey across, uh, uh, across how digital media has also evolved. And I, I always tell this to everyone that uh, uh, it is at a stage where I would say it is at infancy stage. There are a lot of things that we are learning. Uh, eventually, there is some consolidation that is going to happen. Uh, we would, uh, you know, then arrive at the currencies that uh, one should have to evaluate influencer marketing. If you remember, ten years back, the digital marketing ecosystem was going through the same transformation. You, you, you know, initially people were just happy with having a CPM kind of a buy. It eventually started moving to engagement. Then programmatic came in then consolidation of media, then controlling frequency, then ensuring that you're not wasting media. So I think that's all 
in a way is going to also evolve in this uh, ecosystem also uh, and uh, and of course during the way we are going to learn a lot of uh, uh, you know course corrections uh, in terms of how we are going to do influencer marketing also uh, you know the the machine learning and ai are very very important tools which are going to uh, build the entire decision making process for influencer marketing very easy for brands and that's also one thing because it is all going to happen through a lot of machine learning uh, i personally feel that the more number of campaigns that i do on clan is eventually going to help clan to learn a lot of machine learning and eventually give a lot of smart recommendations in terms of not just you know like bahar said uh, it should not really matter if if you have a very huge number of follower base or perhaps slightly lesser because it is eventually uh, you know the, it it is uh, reflective of uh, the the cost that you the, you're charging is reflective of uh, of the kind of engagement that you can draw and then perhaps the engine over a period of time should be able to learn and that's what we are also trying to build whether that the money that influencer the cost that influencer is asking for is actually should directly be proportional to the number of followers that in most of the cases brands generally just say okay 1.1 million plus there should be a cost 100k less there should be a cost it it is not really like that because you know a lot of comments a lot of things are like okay you're looking very good i'm a huge fan is it really driving anything not really right so i think it is it is going to definitely become uh, bigger uh, it is going to become a, a, a certain part of the media mix uh, like uh, digital and it will not be something you know like digital marketing it's it's going to be a separate part of the uh, of the overall media planning mix there has to be a way to also look at influencer marketing a lot of brands ask me today is my cpv or is my cpe cost per engagement or cpv cost per view going to be equivalent to youtube it is not because you know you you are you're comparing two different mediums at one point you have a 30 second a video and the other point you have a perhaps a 3 second or uh, sorry 3 minute or 5 minute video where the completion rate is more than 90% so you are anyway getting a lot of roi on top of it so for you to expect that you get 80 paise cost per view wrong that that's where you know i i feel that we should not very loosely connect influencer marketing with overall digital paid media marketing it has a niche of its own it is going to grow and uh, become much more smarter as we as we move on yes and like you said i am in this business so it is it should definitely become much much bigger i also want to quickly add a jc while uh, i believe you know branded content is a big deal there's amplification that influencers do like you've been uh, you know saying influencers in the future will also definitely be used to kind of drive sales and commerce i believe that's also going to be a part that's going to grow parallelly you know as we speak there are many of them who are uh, you know building courses with influencers because they are becoming experts in their own uh, you know uh, domains Domain. there are yeah. games that are being built you know for uh, with influencers so influencers are kind of you know it's a fairly loosely used term people who have a lot of following and some amount of influencer influence in the domain they are in so it's expanding to you know multiple um, domains so while branded content and marketing is one there are multiple so while gaming also through games there are you know different forms of engagement that brands or others could kind of reach out courses like i said so overall i believe uh, you know like sagar also mentioned it's it's we're fairly in the niche uh, early to mid kind of stages and it's it's definitely going to grow globally and definitely in india because we're still early here so yeah i believe It is, Vivek, it's not just a so you. called uh, sorry yeah. sorry Vivek, one last uh, uh, i'll come back to you bar one second okay, 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 last yeah, yeah, you that uh, keeping aside business brand you know matrix and what we normally chase do you really believe that uh, influencers can actually bring fame uh, and when i say fame i mean fame from uh, you know awards perspective as well in terms of good quality well produced uh, content as well do you really believe it can because a lot of the new sort of you know the awards etc you see these new categories coming in so do you really believe that one can actually produce great work with with influencers as well i find it funny to answer this question what details but influencer ke through this is my question yeah so my answer remains the same so first of all you know take brand like fevi call we i mean they we They, these brand don't chase awards you know whether we work with influencer or do not work with influencers or have celebrity or not do not have celebrity you know uh, so it's all about and i am again saying it's all about content and that needs hard work yeah marketing to work with influencers now whether it wins awards or not it doesn't matter 
but you know since you were talking about future with sagar i would like to say only one thing as we are evolving in marketing through influencers to consumers consumers are also evolving they're not in the same place so yeah. now they got on to inauthenticity and the push content and this brand is being promoted very easily and they don't buy that very 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 yeah. going in the future it will be all about not about putting your brand next to influencers it will be all about how we can solve an issue or a problem in the life of consumer and that as bahar rightly said will not come through impressions it will come through maybe direct messaging where there is the interaction so i think we as marketers should actually measure not the reach approach but but a deeper engagement approach which will come at a higher cost but i think it is the value which it brings to brand which will be far more so we have to i think evolve a kind of a different mechanism to put value to uh, influencer marketing and what it does to the brand bahar yeah so unless you can segregate their authentic and unauthentic self how will you even tell because you know a lot of times these macro influencers that you go for the celebrities they are often uh, pursuing a character so it is it actually works in small towns but people like if you your product means that you have to try and sell it in the uh, cities and you know uh, the metropolitan you need to have people who will actually be engaging a, with, a, in respect to your product beyond social media also so the, you not just looking at people who are popular or celebrities on that one post because in a flicker it will be it will come and go but unless and like um, vivek mentioned that you need to create some it is a lot of hard work if you not able to create something novel that catches somebody's attention it will not leave any anything in the mind of the viewer because they're digesting that much more content on so, social media just by flipping so it's like if you unless you create something novel a uh, human mind is trained to watch something that's different and novel it's like we will be attracted to light like a moth or a baby to a phone you have to give us yeah. something new and if you keep going to a person who's just showing how to wear a skirt or a scarf or a blouse in 10 ways there is a certain um, they, you will have the numbers because fashion is that much easier to spread but not that easy to consume so you have more teenagers watching your product but is that your consumer that's the question yeah, you have to ask Like you want to say something? Add, you know, uh, you know, brands have to make their own own effort to work with influencers to give them content. Also, I'll give an example. We have a fabricated range of art materials brand, right? Yeah. And uh, we often engage with you know hobby teachers and hobbyists who are not famous, but actually they are very well known amongst those you know uh, uh, consumers. And what they do is that is they don't just say buy fabricated; they give them art recipes to create for art and craft. so they do that on their own but we also have a studio in our own company we have a set of 8 10 people who are creating art and craft and recipes different ways of using to create art yeah. and craft in beauty yeah. using our product i can do it then the influencer content which is the hobby the content from a studio is combined to create a holistic approach to influencer marketing so brands have to actually invest in creating content on their own also No, no, it's a great point, Vivek, and I, we are running out of time. But you know, the point you made is actually linking back to communities, right? I mean, a lot of brands today, like whether it's yeah. a biker community, like you said, you know, mothers, you know, a lot of publishing platforms and uh, brands who are actually latching on and creating their own, so to say, tribe or communities that they can leverage. I'm sure it's the same even in the tourism industry. Uh, so we have very little time. I think there are only two minutes, and Kathy has been pinging me on the side. so uh, thanks everyone thanks for your time thanks for all the great points you made a lot of learnings out there for me as well uh, kathy over to you if there are any questions we can ask yeah. them and we get from you yeah absolutely firstly thank you mr mehta for steering and you know driving this whole conversation and thank you to our panelists we did have a lot of questions but because of the paucity of time i'm going to ask just a two of them here uh one is specifically i think for uh, sagar and lakshmi if you one of you would like to take this up which says what is your point on brands who are unable to recognize real creators in the large scale of micro and mini influencers and the engagement is not really valued on instagram with the new algorithm coming in so you know your points on this um i mean if i could so that's why you know agencies actually do it's hard work all the way right so even agencies have to good agencies have to put in a lot of effort to keep identifying new people literally every single day across categories categories are expanding influencer bases are expanding influencers literally anybody who has a loyal set of audience who engage with them uh, and they're good at something that they do 
so we do constantly agencies are supposed to and we do constantly keep looking out for newer people who create really good content there are all kinds of content creators with numbers are an important factor but there are a lot of brands so in a plan of say 15 10 12 15 15 people uh, we always do try to position or put in couple of smaller influencers as well because we've discussed the engagement with smaller influencers are higher so that's something we anyway um, keep doing from time to time i would i would just like to add uh, like for for a uh, for 30 seconds here that uh, uh, it is very important also for the brands to understand the kind of association they are looking for uh, you know uh, and uh, while manual understanding or analysis of anything is important i think uh, you should always have a unbiased machine uh, you know that that will always give you a better and more objective analysis and that's what we endeavor at doing second also is of course the association and you know uh, the objective that you're looking at i would still say taking a celebrity who doesn't know about a mobile phone and asking him to just you know do that is of course not of any use i would much rather have a key opinion leader talking about uh, a, a product in a more uh, you know subtle manner where there is a education being done instead of you know using the brand power or or the follower or the following of a of a big celebrity it, it does not i in my opinion doesn't work at all so it it is it's it's that how it's it, it's going to work right okay quickly so, i'll add there are three things uh, i just wanted to yeah, add yeah. quickly three things that will make a product sell first is urgency scarcity third is relatability if the influence that's when the influencer comes in if somebody cannot relate to the influencer and your product it will not sell no matter what you try and this is such a nebulous market it's subjective so i'll give you an example i had to sell an um, alcohol brand they actually married art into it we created a lot of, uh, we created full facade so that we can sell into a different audience altogether so it's all about being creative on how you sell a product it's not just about standing with a bottle you have to create value and that, that's where the influencers come in absolutely So Sagar, uh, just continuing on the same point that you made. So uh, the question says that how do you see this influencer community will be growing in the future in comparison to the digital brand media marketing, and also because of the pandemic, how do you see this working in the coming months? It has already taken uh, like another uh, spiral all together. It has become too big right now. And uh, one of the few things uh, I would, I mean, pandemic has been bad for all of us. But I think that's one area which is which has become very very important uh, and very very big for brands. They realize that while they cannot do uh, go out and do shoots for their brands or their their advertisements, it is uh, essentially the community which is helping them, uh, you know, garner that extended reach that they want to have. it is very important it is going to be, uh, you know become much bigger uh, going on from here and like all of panelists said uh, before uh, vivek uh, shridhar they also mentioned it is very very important to basically be cognizant of how you are going to use influencer marketing and not really confuse that with any other form of uh, digital advertising they are different things the objective the 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 relevancy that they drive is different uh it is for brands to understand how to use influencer marketing in the best possible manner absolutely uh, so one quick last one uh, and here is a fun one vivek this is for you uh which says pedilite has been promoting brand to the biggest influencer which is the elephant and the concept has been working wonderfully does it plan to change the influencer in the future that's the question from our audience <laughs> <laughs> no actually yes we have used our, our elephant which is part of a brand uh, identity and logo and uh, we have used uh, elephant creativity to drive various messages in covid times and non covid times and it has got huge engagement so yes in a, in a way we can say elephants are not only a brand ambassador but also influencers and the person <laughs> behind this is piyush pande and he is the one who actually create all those engaging piece of uh, work for us So, so you know that only illustrates that the value of content cannot be underrated. You know, it is the most important thing, whether influencer or not influencer. So. Absolutely. Once again, thank you to all our panelists. Thank you, Ajay, uh, everyone, for joining in and taking out the time and speaking to us. I'm sure the viewers have taken a lot of takeaways from this conversation. So, thank you once again. 